Hi, Levi. I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. An absolute pleasure to be able to speak to you. How are you today? All right? Good, good. Yeah. Um, where am I speaking to you from? Uh, I'm in London at the moment. Oh, same as yeah. Well, just yeah. not in the yeah, same place. Yeah. Um, so maybe you could kick off with an introduction to this film. For people who don't know anything about Streamline, what can they expect? Yeah, so it's um, a story of a 15-year-old boy who's dealing with um, being of that age and also the many trials and tribulations that his life throws at him, involving swimming and his family. Yeah. And what was the appeal to be involved with this? Obviously, it's Tyson's first feature film. Um, so what was it about the script that made you think this was going to be a great role for you? Yeah, so I read the script um, a fair few months before shooting and uh, yeah, I fell in love with it instantly, sort of the, the journey the character went on and how um, involved swimming was. And it was interesting, like having that uh, aspect to it. And then I had a conversation with Tyson and I was hooked. Mm -hmm what kind of preparation had to go into it? I mean, you sort of look the part from, from you know, the opening scenes and I don't know how much, you, I don't know if you had a body double, but it looks like you're absolutely killing it in, in the pool from that aspect. So what kind of, um, did you have to do lots of swimming lessons? Were you already a swimmer? How did that work? Yeah, so uh, back home, which I, I don't know, I guess it's so cold here, you wouldn't have a lot of pool, but um, in Australia, there's swimming pools everywhere. And in school, they teach you swimming and stuff, but. I was never great at it as a kid. I wasn't excellent just because I don't know why I never really got attached to it. But um, during preparation for it, I did tons of swimming lessons and focused more on, uh, well, I did, I did climbing. So I kind of, I've got like a conditioning. I was able to condition myself pretty easily to slot into it, but um, sort of training the muscles and making it at least look like I've got the ability. I would never be able to pull off the achievements of boy, but yeah. And um, in terms of the, the shooting from that aspect, was that very tough? I mean, just doing those scenes, but, you know, swimming in the rain. I don't know how much yeah, that, that was to do yeah, for real. It was a Must cold been... night as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it was up, um, up a mountain, not far from where I live. Uh, and it was a swimming pool up there and it was freezing. They had the rain machine on because it, was, um, it wasn't raining that night. And the rain coming out of the machine was very cold. And I had um, my swimming double with me. So he did the bulk of... Uh, a lot of the stuff that I would never be able to pull off ever in my lifetime. So he's like a professional, a young professional swimmer. He was awesome. But yeah, it was uh, a lot of just making sure I didn't appear to be completely out of my depth, which was, yeah, a big part of it. Good pun. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> um, and did you ha have a chance maybe to speak to other people of your age who are kind of into sport in that kind of serious way and the particular pressures that involves because of course it's that double-edged thing of being so lucky to have that kind of talent but that actually the other side of it that it's kind of this burden and mm -hmm. can kind of interrupt a time in someone's life when actually you should still be a kid and not be having to worry about these sorts of responsibilities. Yes, yeah. So uh, actually, I got to, thankfully, I got to have discussions with um, a professional swimmer from Australia, uh, Ian Thorpe, who was great having conversations with him. It was a lot about the mentality side of it, as you said, like it's having, like being such a young, starting from such a young age and having to maintain such a, a presence as you're in, to go into adulthood is, um, it's a very taxing sport, obviously, as all sports are, but it's, Especially for me, I find it completely brutal to be able to uh, wake up early every morning and uh, maintain the diet and the, the rigorous training is like a complete, um, yeah, just insane mentality for it. And I, I got a few friends that um, swim casually, like they used to swim competitively when they were younger and I, I spoke to them. But yeah, it's difficult. They're very, like a very slim amount of people are able to maintain such a a rigorous routine um yeah very hard and what's interesting as well is maybe there's sometimes the perception that people could kind of go into like elite sports come from a very privileged background but of course there's also the flip side that for some people it can be their ticket out of um mm -hmm. kind of you know like quite a deprived um situation you know troubled background because it means it can go places and make money that they wouldn't be able to otherwise yeah so it's quite yeah, interesting yeah, to explore definitely. that specific perspective 
Yeah, sure. So uh, that was a lot of the conversations that Tyson and I spoke about prior to was how like another weight that he carries on his shoulders is the the burden that you know his mother has focused and pushed him sort of down this path, and he's been uh, like everything everything he's sort of achieved in his life is sort of um, dependent on reaching that next step in swimming and uh, like all the focus has been on that so the 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 weight of that alone is um insane to have to deal with on top of also still being uh talented and maintaining the the form itself to be able to pull it off but yeah definitely it's yeah certainly And, and what was tyson like working with as a director considering it was his first film was that obvious to you or you know were you kind of learning together was he collaborative what kind of director was he it was great so we as I said we had um a fair few months beforehand and we'd jump on the phone anytime I had a question we'd jump on the phone or we'd we'd just have constant conversations prior to so it was when we came on set because it was a pretty short shoot we sort of had to keep moving um so we kind of uh got our heads both in the right spot, like exactly made, made sure we had everything that we wanted to, like every note we wanted to hit. And yeah, it was great to be able to have such close contact with the director. And um, it was awesome. Great dude. And what about your fellow cast? I um, mean, you have so many kind of intense scenes, you know, with, with the character, you know, the actress plays your mom and the coach, and then of course your brothers, but as well with Jason Isaacs, um, mm. I just think it's a phenomenal actor and does such different, roles and characters and here I think it's really interesting the way he plays the father character because of course we kind of know that he has this very violent past but in in the present he also seems you know he has the softer side the sensitive side that 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 boy is really you know uh, attracted to and wants to be loved and wants to have a relationship with him so I think it's really interesting the way he plays it so what was it like working with your fellow cast? I was great I, I think um Okay. A lot of the conversations were with Tyson. I kind of, um, not intentionally, but it was just sort of an isolation away from a lot of the other people that I was working with. I, I Previously, I didn't work directly with Jason, but I did a film with Jason uh, a few years back. So it was a little bit of a reunion, just seeing him again. Um, but yeah, the, the scenes with the brothers were awesome because we, we were shooting out in a very hot part of Australia. It was a very hot, all the days we were there were just boiling hot. It was uh, down south. And um, so we'd be in like the little shack trying to escape the heat and we'd have conversations and then we'd shoot the, the montage that ties like on the, on the phone. And that, yeah, it was great. I mean, we were, like good fun shooting with everyone. And the scenes with obviously uh, with both mother and father were super intense and Rob, the coach, yeah, that was a great shoot. Awesome cast. And, and what's interesting as well, probably it was both in, in the shooting of it and in you know the journey of your character that in some ways the party scenes with your brothers are kind of the more fun because he's having a laugh he's being a teenager he's not kind of worrying about anything he's just kind of you know immersing himself in in what he's doing but of course we know that if he goes further down that path he's not going to have uh you know a good outcome so there's kind of that 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 double-edged sword to you know being a kid, being a teenager, but he's kind of ignoring his responsibilities. Yeah, well, I guess the the being so focused down a specific path and then being able to branch out and experience what other people your age are similarly experiencing, the difficulty is that uh, being depraved of that for so long is like a, a spiral down, down a darker path, which was, um, yeah, exactly. And those scenes, it's, it's sort of seen, the beginning of it seems like a finally, a final freedom, finally able to, be young and then uh the issue of control and not understanding um like the the distances that like everything sort of uh burning out at that point and then spiraling down yeah no certainly very difficult did you have a specific favorite scene or favorite moment in, in the shoot yeah but actually we had a day where it was um, like a skeleton crew, like very few of us. And we went out to shoot by the cane fields. And it was just like no dialogue or anything. It was just me and Tyson and um, DOP. And we were, you know, I was just riding a bike down. Like it was as the sun was going down. And then we got 
went out for dinner afterwards and it was like after everything like the previous week was a lot of intense shooting and then following that was a lot of intense shooting and just sort of a breakaway for a second and kind of just yeah I don't know it was it was, it was good an odd day and in terms of what people can take away from the film I guess you know there's so many interesting themes in there you know about coming of age about what it's like to you know follow a sport from from a young age but also about toxic masculinity and that sort of cycle of abuse that can happen in families across generations you know the, the, one of the brothers saying that the older brother oh he's becoming like dad you know and how does that kind of pass through and how you break out of that as well um so what do you think some of the themes are and what do you hope people take away yeah, I think um, following that, like being at the the age of 15, which is for, me, for many young men is like a very tumultuous time, um, whilst also having external factors pushing in and like it, it, estranged family members, et cetera. Yeah, definitely the, the sort of, uh, like not so much in boys case where there's like a legacy that you have to follow, but sort of not understanding what path you wanna map out for yourself and um, the difficulty of different influences coming onto you. Yeah, it's, it's a, a strange age. And do you think those sorts of issues are like more rife, say in Australia, or, I mean, I think there's still kind of, you know, that, that bit of masculine, you know, toxic masculinity that runs through British culture, for example. And I don't know if how, how much that's still very prevalent in like Australian society, kind of a pressure to act a certain way to be yes, kind definitely. Of I think a lot, like many places in the West, have that sort of, um, uh, sort of the the idea of like the, like the patriarchal kind of like embodiment of what makes you a man, mm -hmm. toxic masculinity, etc. Definitely, mm -hmm. and I think that that definitely follows along with um, boy and his family, but it, it was also just sort of the difficulty of being at that age and not knowing. Uh, like where the road takes you and I like an understanding for that for like across across the board and in terms of your career I mean you've had already some such amazing roles you know as Peter Pan and in a wrinkle in time with you know some pretty big a-listers so what were those experiences like for you and what was it like kind of going from there into this film yeah so the, the pan was the first film I ever did when I was 11 um, and then Wrinkle in Time following after that. Yeah, I've, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. I started when I was pretty young, just doing commercials. And then I managed to score Pan uh, when I was a kid. And yeah, it's great. It's great fun. And being able to figure out uh, what roles I like to do and sort of, I'm still figuring it all out, but yeah, it's good fun. I guess you're a bit like boy, but in the movie world, like already. <laughs> <laughs> following a career does it ever feel like a lot of pressure being kind of a child star or is it just a lot of fun uh I think it's just all all there for the craft do you have um huge ambitions for the future or know what you're going to do next is there any like director or actor you'd really love to work with um in terms of working with I'm not sure because I guess the at least I've learned so far is that the majority of the time when I've learned something uh, whilst doing a film it's been being able to work in alongside like with other actors who have already sort of figured out their processes etc so I mean there's an array of people I don't like that they all to cover everyone um but yeah I don't know I just want to see where the see the wind takes me amazing well it's been so nice to chat to you thanks so much Thank for you. sharing all that with me I can't wait for everyone to see Streamline thanks so much thank you I want to meet you